Oh, welcome everyone. Thanks for coming tonight. Uh, my name is Mike Figueroa. I was the past um, vice president for the WPI Rotaract Club. And tonight we're going to be talking about the um, relationship between Rotaract Clubs and their mentors. Rotary. Oops. Okay, this will be tricky. So this is a picture of our Rotaract Club at WPI, our current members. Um, so we started in December of 2014. That's a little over a year and a half from now. Um, and we're about 15 or so members, six exact. So we're still pretty small, but considering the size of the school, that's uh, pretty good. So WPI is uh, mostly engineering and science um, university. Uh, so that's the majority of our members. We all have similar interests, so that makes it kind of easy to connect on project ideas sometimes. There's, uh, there's Emily. <laughs> Oops. Steady. We're working on um, is to recruit new members obviously to grow the club but even more importantly to retain the members that are currently there we want to make sure to keep things interesting and make sure to um, uh, make the club worth people's time because that's the reason that people are here they're not doing it because they're forced to they're doing it because they want to and also important thing to do is because we're a university-based club and not community-based is to improve our image with the um, within WPI. So we want to make sure we have strong relationships with other clubs on campus. That's important for um, creating a sustainable club. And also we're going to work on fundraising activities such as um, a big one is called Mr. Geek, which is still in the planning process, but that's uh, it's kind of like a male beauty pageant spoof thing. So it's a lot of fun. Um, college kids like to get involved with that type of thing. So. A lot of our members are really looking forward to that. Whoops. Oh, God. Okay. So, club activities to dates. Um, when we first started um, by Katie Piccioni, we were working on a project um, from Engineers Without Borders that was trying to um, provide clean drinking water to a village in Guatemala. And they set up these rainwater collection systems. And to do that, you need funding. And the funding came from none other than Rotary. So we said, why not try to do this for other projects? And here we are, a year and a half later. Um, so that project was really successful. And now we're trying to establish our roots, you know, get things going on a local level. Uh, so we've been doing a lot with community service. Um, Mustard Seed was a uh, community kitchen in which we would help the homeless. Um, we did food package ev events through Rotary for um, End Hunter Now and uh, breakfast events, pancake breakfasts, and a few other things with Rotary. So Together We Can was a big event that we planned um, last year. It was a huge, successful fundraising activity in which we brought together the community service clubs of um, WPI. So that was Rotaract, um, Global Humanitarian Alliance, uh, Engineers Without Borders, and I think it was three others. Um, so basically, we raised awareness for community service um, throughout WPI. So unfortunately, it was a little rainy that day, but you know it was still a good start. And we're hoping to do things like that in the future. Um, it's important to work with like-minded individuals, so it's not just the 15 of you; it's 40 people. Because um, when you're a university, you can do that. You know, people are a short walk away from your dormitory. Uh, another thing to um, notes is the visioning process, which leads into project selection, and Rita will talk more about the visioning process. There's a little scrolly thing. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Oh, skipped one. Okay. All right. Sorry about that. All right. So we're going to talk about the visioning now. Um, obviously, you are all already familiar with the visioning since you're all part of Rotary Clubs. Um, what's interesting is that Rotaract can do those too. Um, the main difference is that it's sort of on a shorter term basis. So for Rotary, you do it every four years and you come up with this great long-term goal. 
Unfortunately, that's not really feasible for Rotaract chapters because our membership turns over so frequently. Every year we get new members and every year those interests are going to change. So our vision statement has to reflect that change. Thus, instead what we do is hold a visioning every year. So um, I'll talk a little bit about how we go about that process in our club. So in an ideal situation, um, we would have a Rotary member, um, ideally from the sponsoring club, come in and host the ceremony for us. In this way, we have all of the Rotaract members able to participate and voice their opinions and really just actively participate in the visioning experience. Um, if this is not able to be done for whatever reason, it is possible to have it run by a student member. Um, for that for that matter, uh, last year I actually hosted um, as the past president um, at the time, and so it is perfectly feasible to have a student run it so long as they've already been through the process and know what it's like. Um, one advantage to doing it this way is you really get a better sense of what Rotaract is going to be like and also what how Rotary operates as well because the process is similar for the two organizations. So um, following our visioning hosted by students, um, we actually came up with a guide for how students could potentially run the visioning ceremony in future. And that will hopefully be passed on through the next couple of years and utilized continuously. So just like it works in a Rotary Club, the advantage of the visioning is that everyone has the opportunity to voice their opinions. In standard um, club meetings, it's very possible that someone who's newer to the club or just isn't as open to expressing their opinions may not go and do so. But the way that we host the visioning is extremely open. So you really encourage everyone to voice their thoughts and collect them all together at the same time. This will ultimately help to determine the general direction of the club for the upcoming year and it should also be open to change depending on the interests of clubs. So um, it should be something a little bit more flexible than your standard rotary visioning statement. But um, by the end of the process, a club will still have a statement and a general goal. Hopefully that will still remain in more or less the same direction over the coming years, so that way um, goals will be getting met. All right. Is that right? OK. Well, here we go. So. As a result of our last visioning ceremony, WPI's Rotaract Club came up with our own statement. So, the WPI Rotaract Club will utilize the current academic year to develop a foundation for the club through long-lasting positive impacts in the WPI community that will raise awareness of our actions and enable us to pursue Rotary grants and larger projects in future. So, the next step, of course, is getting this visioning statement and um, turning it into a reality. So we can do that through smart action planning and that's something that Mike will talk more about next. Yeah, so what exactly is smart planning? Um, you guys are the ones who taught me this actually, so you should know. So specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time-based. So this is a really organized system of creating a goal, an agenda for yourself, so you're not just shooting at ideas in the dark. Um, so this kind of uh, quantifies qualitative um, goals and makes sure that everything gets done on time. And it seems to work really effectively. And we tried to implement it within our own club and it seems to be going pretty well so far. So this is our smart action plan that was developed immediately after the visioning process. I'll kind of lead you through this. I won't talk about each and every one, but it starts with the uh, research phase in which we look into projects and community service opportunities that we want to pursue over the first part of the year. Um, fundraising, how we want to fund these projects um, and such. Um, that We need people to work on these projects, so we need to recruit new members, retain the ones we have with new, fun, exciting activities. And also to increase our ranks, we have to contact other Rotaract clubs. So we're reaching out to MIT, Babson, all, all the good ones out there, Brookline. Um, I'm sure I missed a few. But um, after we do this, we need to focus on our main local projects in which we're going to be collaborating with other clubs, other Rotaract clubs. Um, for this one, is education-based, so we're going to target the schools that we want to work with. Um, Advertising this project around WPI and the Worcester community is really important. And through this, we need strong mentorship. And who better to provide that than Rotary? So we need to increase our bonds with Worcester Rotary because they're the ones who are going to be teaching us um, their ways. After which, we scale up our local projects to the international level. This is projecting a little bit further in time. Um, and then ultimately we will have a budget set up for all these cool projects that we want to work on in the future. OK, 
Okay. So now, um, Rita's going to talk about some of the finer points of mentorship and what it means to our club. All right, so um, we didn't have this in the slides originally, but um, I thought it was very interesting that in some of the prior presentations, um, the frequency of meetings and things was a little bit different than for our club. So um, just as a reminder, WPI is a little bit different than some of your other universities. Um, we operate on a term schedule, which means instead of semesters to finish a course, you have a seven week period. So everything moves very, very fast. And as a result of that, um, you still need to reach all of your goals as a club, but you have sort of a shorter time span to do it because people are going to be free at different times um, throughout those terms. So as a result, we have meetings every week for a general body and likewise for exec. So that means um, a student that is involved in exec will have to attend two meetings each week. Um, for some other clubs that may seem a little bit unusual, but to sort of preface that, um, Engineers Without Borders is an extremely established club on our campus. Um, they've been around for probably close to six years now. And as a result of that, they have four meetings a week. So by comparison, um, this is about on par um, for an average WPI club. And you can expect more out of the students by having these meetings because you're able to have them all sit down and sort of put in the time to work. Because if you don't get them together, they're going to just do engineering homework all day. So basically, um, this sort of encourages them to actually come together and do the work for Rotaract the way that they should be. So that's why you need the increased meeting frequency and it's something to consider for um, any university-based club because it will, of course, defer. Um, so on that note, um, our mentorship relationship is probably also a little bit different than in other clubs. So we'll just be speaking about um, our relationship with our mentors thus far. So when we first started at WPI, we had Carl Gomes and Steve D'Agostano helping us out um, with the foundation and really providing a lot of guidance and a lot of inspiration for what our club could potentially be in the future and where we could really go. So this was extremely um, advantageous because it really helped boost membership and get everyone really active um, and interested in Rotaract. Since then, um, Worcester Rotary, as our sponsoring club, has brought in some new mentors for us, so Emily Buresh and um, Rodney White as well. And um, they've been filling in for the last couple of months now, and they've been doing a really great job. Um, it's still early, so they're still getting to know the execs and the members, and uh, our general members. But um, overall, it's been really a very different experience. We're getting some more insight about um, ways that our club could potentially improve, such as by improving our fundraising efforts and things like that. So the feedback has been a little bit different. It's no longer so much about necessarily pushing the inspiration, but so much as how we can improve our club. Um, now that we're a little bit more established, that's really useful for us. So our other advisors, of course, are from WPI. So we have Blake Courier with us tonight. And we also have Professor Lisa Stoddard. So um, these advisors are a little bit more important for a university-based club, of course. and. I'd say that it's really, really crucial because there's some things that Rotary may not be aware of in terms of what a school will permit a club to do versus not. So, um, for example, I've attended several of Rotary's fundraisers, and I know wine baskets are very popular at silent auction. That's a big no-no for WPI and is very much not allowed. So it's just the little things like that. And the, um, the university-based advisors are going to be able to be aware of those sorts of problems and let you know. So um, having a good relationship with both your Rotary advisors and your Rotaract advisors and your university staff in general is really important. Oh, goodness. Okay. So um, there's a lot of gains to be made through a good relationship with Rotary and your Rotaract club. Um, it really helps our members to understand Rotary and its goals overall and makes us more likely to participate in Rotary once we hit 30. Um, it also encourages us to get active in applying for Rotary grants and sort of enlarging our projects and our goals. Um, also encourages us to start to collaborate with you guys on the projects that you're doing in your clubs. So definitely just gains all around. Um, for example, for us, we were able to attend a food packaging event with um, one of the clubs in the district and also we were able to attend a scholarship breakfast as well and that really helped us to get to know more people in Rotary and the reasons that they were involved um, which again really instills that idea of okay I should probably join Rotary when I graduate so um, all good things and the last thing of course is that the commitment um, in this relationship is a two-way street so it's expected that everyone has really good open communication so if there's a problem you're able to work it out and um, 
Basically, it will really, really help with your club progress and development as a whole. So um, open communication and frequent communication is definitely key. So to summarize everything that we've kind of gone over, we have this little do and do not list. So I'll start with the negative things so we can end on a positive note. So um, things that the relationship probably should avoid. Um, this is particularly true for the WPI club. Um, you cannot assume that your members are taking Rotaract as their primary like motivation, as their primary um, priority. So for our members um, who are all in engineering, they're working towards their degrees. So of course, if it comes up that um, they have a test to study for, uh, they weren't expecting or something like that, um, they might not be showing up at that volunteering event that they said that they were going to be able to. Um, it's something that just needs to be taken into consideration. Another important thing is that we are all college level students. We're pretty much adults, we like to think. So um, it would be really great if we were able to sort of have a two-way discussion in terms of what um, executive decisions should be happening for the club and what type of guidance may or may not be necessary. So um, having that as an open conversation is really good as opposed to um, sort of saying, oh, well, all the other Rotaract clubs do it this way. So, you know, not to say that that's happened, but just theoretically. So. Um, that's the do not section. And for things that you should do, um, definitely encourage your students to do more. Um, if you think that the goals that they're setting are not as high as they could be, then say so. Um, it wasn't something that we'd really realized that fundraising wasn't a huge priority for us, but it really should be. So that was really good feedback to hear from Emily. So um, definitely speak your mind about that. Um, as was already stated, treat your uh, members as young adults and future potential Rotary members. Um, provide assistance when it is requested. The students will definitely realize when they're having problems, like how we're having problems with fundraising. So um, they'll reach out for help. And if they do, then definitely be aware of what resources exist to assist them. Um, another thing was to develop a relationship with the school administration, as was mentioned previously. That's going to be really important just for making sure all club events run smoothly. And last and not, not least, of course, get to know the students in the club because they want to get to know you too. So yes, um, that is it. Do we have any questions? Okay. All right, Carl. Are you putting together a vision? Are you putting together that vision package that you did so that you can share with other Rotaract clubs? And would you be willing to mentor a club through the visioning process? Sure, so um, when we went through the visioning process, um, we were very careful to document everything that was going on. Oh, is that the one that I should be using? Oh, here we go. So um, the visioning document as it stands right now is probably an eight page or so at most document. Um, it includes like script narrative for what you should be saying and just general instructions for like, okay, in order for this to work, you need 10 really big pieces of paper and 50 stickers of this shape and things like that. So um, it's sort of like the recipe book for how to do the visioning. And um, I'm really hoping that it's something that um, will continue to evolve since it's the first time that it's been written. I'm sure when McKenna has to deal with this next year, she'll realize all the problems and all the things that I didn't write and everything else. So it's definitely a living document, but if it's something that anyone is interested in, of course I can send it out. And um, in terms of mentoring other clubs, uh, we'll go on a case-by-case -case basis, but I'm sure we'll be able to figure something out. Great.